It is amazing how intelligent we can be. We can construct shelter, find new ways of hunting, and create clothing and machines. Our unique intelligence has been responsible for the emergence of civilization. But how does a set of living cells become intelligent? How can flesh and blood turn into something that can create bicycles and airplanes or write novels? This is the question of the origin of intelligence. This problem has puzzled many theorists and scientists and is particularly important if we want to build intelligent machines. Machines still lag well behind us. Although computers calculate millions of times faster than we do, it is we who understand the big picture in which these calculations fit. Even animals are much more intelligent than machines. A mouse can find its way in a hostile forest and survive. This cannot be said for our computers or robots. The question of how living systems have managed to achieve intelligence is difficult to answer. This remains a mystery for science. Recently, however, a new theory has been proposed that may resolve this very question. The theory is called Practopoesis, and it is founded in the most fundamental capability of all biological organisms, their ability to adapt. Darwin's theory of evolution describes one way biological systems adapt. By creating offspring, new combinations of genes are tested, the good ones are passed on for generations, and the bad ones don't survive. The result is a genome better adapted to the environment. Practopoiesis tells us that the genome is not the only part of our body that adapts. Quite similar adaptation mechanisms, full of trials and errors, occur while an organism grows, while it digests food, and also while it acts intelligently or thinks. A neuron in our brain can slowly adapt by growing new connections. The same neuron can also quickly adapt to selectively accept signals from only certain specific neurons. Such fast adaptations occur while we juggle ideas in our minds in an attempt to solve a problem. The right pattern of adaptations leads to a solution. Notably, all adaptations include interactions with the environment because feedback is required to guide adaptation. The growth of a plant's body is not precisely programmed by the genes. Instead, genes perform experiments, which, after feedback from the environment, find a proper shape for the body. Only with trial and errors can the body successfully grow. This is also why twins with identical genes usually look sufficiently different to distinguish one from the other. To conduct those experiments, our genes contain an elaborate knowledge of which experiments need to be done and this knowledge of what to try has been acquired through eons of evolution. We kept whatever worked well for our ancestors. Practopoiesis tells us that in a similar way, neurons interact with the environment to acquire knowledge over a lifetime about which quick adaptations are most likely to produce good outcomes. This knowledge is used later in life. To create intelligent behavior such as thinking, choosing appropriate clothing, or simply reading signs to decide which way to go, our bodies use this knowledge to conduct a rapid exchange of trials and errors, making quick adaptations and getting rapid feedback from the environment. These fast adaptations may affect structures that enable neurons to connect, called synapses. After adapting, a synapse may become less capable of transmitting inputs. Such rapid adaptations distributed across all synapses and neurons, and possibly also across other cells in our body, collectively make us think and reach our decision. These fast adaptive mechanisms adjust the network of our connected nerve cells. They change, in the blink of an eye, the flow of the signals in the network. And it is the right pattern of adapted pathways in the brain that makes it possible to recognize one's own grandmother. The slow and fast adaptive mechanisms share several properties. 
Neither can operate without a vast knowledge on what proper steps of adaptation are. And neither can be successful without receiving feedback and thus iterating through several stages of trial and error. For example, fast adaptation mechanisms may need to test several possibilities of what this object and distance could be. Practopoiesis states that adaptive mechanisms of different speeds are organized into a hierarchy. First, evolution creates genes at a painstakingly slow tempo. Then gene expression mechanisms act as slow adaptive mechanisms, which enable us to learn about the world by creating new mechanisms for fast adaptation. Next, fast adaptation mechanisms change the properties of our nerve cells within seconds. Finally, the resulting adjusted networks of nerve cells route sensory signals to muscles with the speed of lightning. Only then can behavior be created. Probably the most groundbreaking aspect of practopoietic theory is that our intelligent minds are not primarily located in the connectivity matrix of our neural networks, as it has been widely held, but instead in the elaborate knowledge stored in the fast adaptive mechanisms. The more knowledge our cells have on how to quickly adapt, the greater capability we have to adjust in novel situations, solve problems, and generally act intelligently. Therefore, our intelligence seems to come from the hierarchy of adaptive mechanisms, from the very slow evolution that enables the genome to adapt over generations, to the quick pace of neural adaptation expressing knowledge acquired through an organism's lifetime. Only when all these adaptations have been performed successfully can our networks of neurons perform tasks with wonderful accuracy. The same type of organization with multiple adaptive levels may be necessary for creating artificial intelligence that matches biological intelligence. Our capability to survive and create originates then from the adaptive mechanisms that operate at four different levels. Evolution for setting up genes, slow adaptation for learning, fast adaptation for thinking, and neural activity for creating behavior. Each of the levels accumulates a vast amount of knowledge. The combined result of all of them together is what makes us intelligent. To learn more about the theory of practopoiesis, follow the links in the description. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more mind and brain videos.